you going, brother? Good. How you doing? I'm looking at a Bramlin post, Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. okay. <laughs> cool. Go on. Yeah. Um, Saturday morning over here. Whereabouts in the US are you at the moment? I live in New Jersey, so I'm on Eastern Standard Time. It's 9.13 here. Yeah, nice. Okay, cool. No, good there stuff. You. Um, Look, uh, Todd, if it's cool, I wouldn't mind starting with some of your other projects before we get into talking about the new Psychroptic, if that's okay. Oh, that'd be great, no doubt. Sure, man. Yeah, of course. So easy. Awesome. Um, I saw mm -hmm. that uh, this year you joined um, Tombs. How do you get together with those guys, yeah? So funny enough, the, so there's one main dude in Tombs, his name is Mike Hill, and he's been doing it since the beginning of the band. He's the only original member. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome dude. The dude who plays drums for Tombs is a good friend of mine. He and I have been playing in bands together since like 2005, I want to say. And being busy with Psychroptic kind of made it so that he had a little bit of a more open space in his schedule to play drums for other shit and mike was looking for a drummer so by the time those two were done getting to know each other the bass player of tombs had moved on and then they hired a dude named drew who had already been in uh bands with justin and i who plays drums and before you know it mike's this version of tombs is three quarters the same ingredients as another band that justin and drew and i are all in so okay it's, it's just one big happy family you know yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, Bassinate, I uh, had an album, what, out 2011? Is there any chance we're going to hear more from those guys? I just helped the drummer move from his condo to his new house on Sunday, and we kind of talked about it at length. So it's rare to talk about that band. No one even knows about it uh, yeah. nowadays, but uh, we were pretty into what we had going on at that time. And yeah. uh I would love to kind of just pick it up where we left off if we make time for it. So I say, yes, I just don't have a timeline, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Man. Yeah. Um, and what about uh hammer fight? What's going on with those guys? Hammer fight is the band that I was talking about when I said tombs is now three quarters of hammer fight. Yeah. So, so, so when hammer fight was touring, the last time we were on the road was probably five or six years ago. It was Justin and drew myself and Dan who came from a bassinate as well. We're all just, from from the area and just trying to do it you know yeah that's cool so is there much um i don't know i've never been to new jersey is there like a good metal scene going on there's always shows and stuff happening oh, I, I wish i could tell you I, I feel like i'm out of town so much these days and when i am home i work so much i don't know what the kids are up to but uh yeah. it's fucked up because in this area it, there have been so many good venues that kind of lived and died over the years and now they're more few and far between there's uh, very seldom do you see good promoters putting on good shows, but doing shows with Psychroptic, I've been touring the States with them for years and I've never played with them in New Jersey ever. So, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. they've done it before, before my time, but we always get stuck playing like Brooklyn or Philly or something like that with both, both of which are awesome, but you never get to do the hometown gig if you're from Jersey. So, yeah, yeah sure. Um, I saw too that you um you played live with uh, Cattle Decapitation. How'd you get together with those guys? Cattle Decapitation was doing this tour in Australia and New Zealand in 2018. Mm. I guess Derek had just quit Cattle right before that tour had started, and I, so Cropton were supporting Cattle on that tour anyway. So I was going to be there either way. Um, I think the truth is they reached out to me to see if I can do it just to kind of save the hassle of work visas and flights. And hmm. um, I was able to spend enough time with the songs to learn them in time. Yeah. And fuck, it was awesome. I'm, I'm so glad I got to do that. Sick yeah. dudes, amazing shows. It was really cool. Yeah, they were great shows. Man. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So those all those bands and Psychroptic included, it's a pretty eclectic mix of metal. Um, what kind of stuff are you listening to at the moment? I wish I could tell you that I listened to some newer stuff, but I mostly listen to shit that came out 20 years ago. Or I, So as far as bands that put out new releases that I always take the time to check out, I've been spending time with the new Meshuga. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, I spent time with the newest Decapitated record, which I don't want to say they lost my interest. I just think that their earlier material was a million times stronger. And mm -hmm. then the newest one, I've been spending time with that, which... There's a couple of moments I could do without. I don't want to. I don't want to pick on them, but um, for the most part, it's fucking excellent. Um, and then nowadays, I spend time looking into 
projects that belong to friends of mine. So like look at a Bramlin, for example, I knew nothing of a Bramlin before I started playing in a band with Dave. And then because of that, I started looking into their shit. I'm always on the werewolves, always yeah. on. And then you pick up stuff from like, um, I, we just did a tour when Tombs was out in May and June of this year with Origin in the States. We were out with this band called Abysmal Dawn. Yeah. And I know Abysmal Dawn has been around forever, but uh, for some reason, I just, they were lost on me. And now because of that tour, I spent time looking through their back catalog and shit like that. Uh, I don't really have a favorite flavor of heavy metal these days. I listen to a lot of shit that I never normally would have, um, including stoner shit, doom. Um, doesn't matter. Yeah, that's good. That's a good way to make That's cool. Really, really. Yeah. Um, all right, so if we go to Cryptic, um, was it like 2015 you got together with those guys around there? Is that right? Yeah, so yeah. You know, the first shows I played with Cryptic were in 2015, but I was not an official member of the band till 2018. Yeah, okay, sure. And how'd you, how'd you get together with the Cryptic guys? So the, dude, the dude who plays bass for Revocation is one of my oldest friends. Uh, Revocation is doing pretty well now. Uh, mm. I, I feel like no matter what conversation you find yourself in, if I mention that, people at least know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So the Revocation Boys have been going, I mean, just road dogging it hard for over 10 years now. And one of the first tours that Revo did after they signed to Relapse, Brett, their current bass player, and myself were supporting them in a different band that were also from New Jersey called the Binary Code. Became good friends with them. Over the years, I started working for them as an employee. I worked for Revo for ages, just tour managing and, and selling their merch mostly. But um when Revocation went to Australia their first time, Cycroptic were kind of like their escorts and took them around and showed them a good time. Yeah. So they became real good friends. And then the next time Cycroptic were meant to do a U.S. tour and Cam couldn't make it. And they needed a bass player who was stateside that they didn't have to fly over from Australia. They called Brett. Brett couldn't take the gig. I was standing right next to him when he got the phone call and then we kind of just made it work. So, and I had never played bass at the time, so. Okay, cool. You know, mm. yeah, yeah, it's cool. yeah. Um, so 2018, um, you're on the uh, as the Kingdom Drowns album. That How was, was the first, yeah, yeah, yeah. How was it playing and working, recording these songs compared to the uh, other well, bands you were? Way more intense as far as the how hard the parts are to play, if I'm being honest, because mm. you know, it's just like that. But but I didn't record all the parts for King in the way I did on Divine Council. So the newest record, 100% of the bass recordings you hear are, are me. So I'm finally mm. like, this is, my, this is my first full initiation into the re recording of projects with the band. But So that was cool. But I did everything in New Jersey and just sent them the stems. And Joe's oh, nice. mixing any. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Is that easy enough to kind of communicate that way and get it done? I think it's pretty easy. I mean, yeah. Joe's really easy on me. We, we, we've we spent plenty of time doing the FaceTime and Skype and all this and that, working out how parts go. And he's like always sending earliest versions of recordings as soon as he's got ideas just to kind of bounce shit off of everyone. And then I had Justin do play his drums for tombs recording my parts. So I didn't just have to work on it myself. I was still able to get like the, the back and forth between producer engineer and you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It all just worked out in, in like the smoothest way. You would think that it would be difficult doing a record with dudes who are on the other side of the world, but the tools that we have at our disposal are pretty useful. Yeah, man, that's cool. Um, so with this album, do you think um the writing's changed at all? Like, does it feel different to the last one? It feels more. Yeah, I feel like it keeps getting more and more. I hate to use the word epic because it does. I don't think that's the type of band we the sound that we go for just as a whole, yeah. but the choruses are, are just getting bigger and more soundtracky. And I think that what has been happening with the psychroptic sound is that uh, Joe has kept the meat and potatoes of the riffing style while making the songwriting formulas more, um, I guess maybe more verse, chorus, verse for that, for lack of a better way to put it. The songs are structured so that, to me, they hit that like Hall and Oates classic rock and roll template where they're 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 fun and they're catchy and they're memorable, but they still have the same like blazing effect as the early Psychroptic years. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I spoke to Jason in July last year, and we mostly talked about you know shows being cancelled and rescheduled and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a nightmare. Hey? <laughs> it just it, it, it melts your fucking brain. I, I got to a point where I forgot that we had. I don't, you don't forget, but it was like it just felt like a lifetime ago. Mm. God, I can't believe we did all that shit. Yeah, that's not. You know what I mean? We were always on a plane. <laughs> we were always just doing something. Mm. And I had between the very end of 2015 and the in July of 2019, when we did Obscene Extreme together or Hellfest in France, one of the mm. two, we had already done 300 shows together. Yeah. And I wasn't even in the fucking band. Like we were just going for it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do you think things have improved with that? Like uh, the shows you're booking now, they seem more likely to kind of go and ahead. Honestly, there's not a single thing about it that hasn't improved. Everything's yeah. better. Yeah. So the quality of the songs to me are better. Uh, the overall team morale is better. The vision that we have for the future seems to be better. The ability that we have to solve problems and streamline the process, optimize, and just like get shit done as a team effectively has improved it's it's the best thing in the world to just be in a band with the most absolute professionals it's fucking yeah. sick yeah yeah so we, we we've gotten really good at just kind of delegating tasks so that everyone in the band um sticks to what they're strongest at and just absolutely crushes it which alleviates nonsense or responsibility from people who aren't for example, Joe's going to be programming our lights because he's like a software fucking super genius. That's not exactly for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, I, everyone takes the time out of their day to make everyone else's life easier. So great, great teamwork and spend. That's, yeah. that's better than I've ever been to, you know? That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm, I've looked at, you guys got some tour dates coming up, Brazil and you, you know, around the US and that kind of thing. That'll be fun, man. Eh? First time in South America. Mm, nice. So we're very excited for that. We just got fucking yellow fever vaccine <laughs> on <laughs> Monday. I got mine. Um, first time I've had to do that, which is mm. fucking crazy. We went to India five years ago. So we're doing three shows down there. Should be killer. And then we're doing our first U.S. tour since 2019. And it's a co-headliner with Fallujah. So we're ecstatic. So mm. Fallujah is acroptic. We alternate headline slots each night. Nice. Interloper and, and then Cognitive is the first of four. And uh, I, I just, I believe in the tour. I think it's going to crush. I know that the, this year in general has been a weird one because it's like, uh, as Travis Ryan said, the great log jam of 2022. There's so many tours on the road all at once. You kind of don't know what you're going to get as far as who's going to come and see what show. Uh, when I was out with Tombs and Origin in the spring, while well, what's uh, spring for us was autumn for you guys, it was... Uh, Fuck, there was a uh, there was a show that was as good or better down the street every night and it was like uh, guar and go to around at the same time instruction was out at the same time with lover creation and the cavalier boys were doing their thing and it was just like that that, that would be my only concern about the upcoming shows that when we're out in the states there's probably going to be some fierce competition but uh i think that the package that we have assembled makes perfect sense for this album release and i think that the response to the new record has been crushing and I hope that it goes the way that we hope it goes, which is uh, I, people still want to just get the fuck out of the house and let loose. The only yeah. problem is it might have too many places to choose from. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Not the worst problem in the world for the audience, but yeah. yeah. No, it's not. No, it's great. Yeah. It's great. Because, yeah. it's, it's because um, having artists that are on the road and plentiful, uh, it, it's, it still feels like a breath of fresh air after being, it, it still feels for a lot of people like we're, we're just getting back to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. So, um, is there any chance like Crop is gonna make it back to Australia sometime soon? I think there's a very good chance, very, very good chance. So I wouldn't say in 2022, but I'd say yeah. there'd be multiple things that we're trying to put together for the following year. Yeah. So Crop Think is at the point now where I think we have to wait to the end of this next touring cycle to kind of see how we want to play our next cards in terms of are we going to be supporting other bands on bigger tours? Are we going to try to do more headliners? Are we going to be doing regional shit, big cities only? Um, flying in Australia is tricky at the moment. So if we're booking our own shows, we've got to be careful about how we do it. We've had a ton of delays. Baggage has been getting fucked. Um, we're not getting into like the, the annoying part of the business, you know? Okay, yeah. But moving forward, I think we plan on doing Australia more than once in 2023. It's a loose conversation at the moment, but it's a conversation that's being had. Yeah, nice.
I see talking to that. How do you go juggling, you know, all those bands and shows and stuff? Is that a tricky, uh, you know? I'm burning the fuck out over here. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think that I, I'm, I've done it to the point where uh, some days I have to decide who am I going to disappoint today. <laughs> um, yeah, so. without being dramatic about it. But the be- honestly, the best thing answer I could give you is that you fucking do one thing and then you do the other, and then the next thing you know, it's like, oh my god, I haven't played guitar in seven months. What the fuck? And, and then you just have to. I think that it's like a necessity as the mother of invention type of attitude where if it, if it needs to get done, I will make sure it gets done. If it, if it, if it can wait and I'm really don't have the time then I just have to move some shit around carefully. I'm lucky that I have um, band dudes that are willing to put up with my stupid bullshit is really <laughs> the long and short of it. Cause the, the guys in tombs, when I joined tombs, it was a very unique scenario where like, the drummer had a newborn on the way and we were still kind of not mid pandemic, but no one knew when shows were going to be back in full swing. Mm. So I joined that band under the pretense of like, yo, let's have fun. Let's kick ass. Let's do a record. But like we'll probably play minimal shows. And then the next thing, you know, tour offers show up, people want to do shit. So that we get all excited. And then the next thing you know, you got to find, you find yourself in a situation where you have to be in two places at once. And that's not a good position for anyone, really. But um, I've, again, been lucky that everyone has been patient. And then, and then with the Psychroptic Boys, I, I was losing my mind not having anything to do, being physically in a room full of gentlemen who want to play riffs. So I needed tombs to for my own sanity as well. Yeah. And then, of course, it was going to happen where it's all back at once, and then feast their fucking famine, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, here we are. Yeah, that's uh, again. It's not the worst problem to have having a bunch of great bands to play with. Is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm just the luckiest dude in the world, just in general. I got fucking opportunities everywhere, and people want to do shit. And like, I often find myself getting like, ah, I I wish I could, but I can't. But at the end of the day, I think that I have had to decline shit that's so good that people would would wish that that they even had the offer in the first place. So I'm very grateful that I've been lucky enough to work with such individuals who are like prolific and just tenacious and just want to do shit. Because I've noticed recently uh, talking to, I actually, I don't know if you know a guy named Cam Roberts, but he's a friend of mine who lives in Australia and he's he's a guitar tech and he's awesome. He said to me recently that the pandemic taught him that he's a collaborator. And if you take away the person that you're collaborating with, it sucks all the fucking fun out of it. And I never used to think of it like that. I used to think of it like, well, I'm lazy until someone gives me a reason not to be. But the, but the truth is the collaborator thing is really what's going on there. If someone else wants to do a project, even if it's just a tour, then you, you're like, all right, cool. I'll be the best I can be for this project. Mm. I, if I leave it just up to myself to do tackle musical endeavors, well, there's no excitement to it. It's like the it's like the ultimate way to fucking hang out with your boys is to do a record and do a tour, you know? Yeah, definitely. That's cool. Sick. Yeah, yeah. nice. Awesome. Well, look, Todd, thanks heaps for your time. I'll let you you know get back to you Friday night. And yeah, uh, of thanks yeah. for having me, man. Yeah, it's been great. And everyone watching, check out the links below, you know, check out the new record. It's fucking yes. killer. And um, thanks a lot, dude. Yeah. Thank you again, man. Cool. Have hopefully, a good one. We'll, hopefully we'll see you in WA, you know, next year sometime. I'll be out yeah. there, I promise. Cheers, yeah. man. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Have a good one.